Patriot head coach Bill Belichick said a lot of this week centered on putting the San Francisco loss behind them and moving forward. And first year head coach Mike Malarkey and his Jaguars have lost three straight, ten of their last eleven. He had to make nine roster moves just this week, 88 for the season, as much as any team in the entire NFL. In the flip of the coin, it was won by New England. They have deferred, so Jacksonville will be receiving, meaning that Stephen Guskowski will be kicking off for the New England Patriots. And deep back will be Richard Murphy, who is a rookie free agent last year and now in his first full season out of LSU. Here we go, the Pats and the Jaguars from Jacksonville. And Toasted, who is a backup running back, will bring it out and climb his way out near the 22 on a 22-yard return. Taking us to that Jacksonville offense, led by quarterback Chad Henney. His 52% completion mark, the lowest among starting quarterbacks in the NFL. Chad Henney said that when you play against the New England Patriots defense, you have to be very resilient, capitalize on the opportunities that he's going to be given today. Remember, this Patriots defense has allowed the most explosive pass plays of any team in the NFL. From the 22, first down and 10. A lot of changes defensively for the Patriots. We'll get to that in just a second. Play action by Henny. And deep, and he's got Justin Blackman. Brought down by McCourty. The catch and run of 18 yards. He is the rookie from Oklahoma State and a very much decorated college receiver. No surprise, Jacksonville's going to come out throwing the football. Devin McCourty starting at cornerback today, not at safety, because a key to lead, battling a hip injury, and now Jaguars going with the no huddle off. That's a lead has been so important for that secondary for the New England Patriots, but yeah, a lot of maneuvering parts now for New England. First down and ten. And he's taking the place of the injured Blaine Gabbert who hurt his arm earlier in the season. And Montel Owens will zigzag his way and brought down on the play by Dante Hightower on a gain of three. Now on that line, Guy Wimper starting at the right tackle. They have allowed 42 sacks. Monroe, the best of that group. And receiver Cecil Shorts just 75 yards away from 1,000 this season, which would be a real accomplishment for a team that has only won twice in 14 games. It is second down and seven in the game opening drive for Jacksonville. Miami, two Eagle, Miami, two Raptor. Miami, two Raptor. Miami, two Raptor. Hesitation, but the tight end's going to gather that, and that's Mercedes Lewis, and brought down once again by Hightower on a gain of four to the 47 yard line. New England's front seven, the strength of this Patriot D. Vince Wilfork, of course, anchors the defensive line. Now moving to linebacker is Rob Ninkovich taking the place of the injured and out, Brandon Spikes. And in the secondary, all kinds of changes. Arrington comes in for Tlaib. There goes McCourty. Now he'll leave safety. He'll go to quarterback. Gregory is in there, of course, and Chung is in McCourty's place in the safety level. It's third down and three. Chung actually saw about 19, 20 snaps last week against San Francisco, and they uh, saw him uh, play fairly well against the Niners. Underneath, this is Shorts. He's got the first down, running by Hightower, and out of bounds with a catch and run on the play of 10. Mark him at the 43-yard line of New England and a Jacksonville first down. Well, everyone in the stadium knows that Henny is going to try to get the ball to Cecil Shorts. We talked about him in the open. His ability to create yards after the catch comes at a premium. He's a big-time playmaker for the Jacksonville Jaguars. No hitter, uh, may have uh, been a nice little wrinkle headed by Mike Malarkey this week. And it gives Henny a chance to survey the defense and pick the matchup he wants. He's taking the start. The play clock, as you can see, already down to five. First down and ten. And here comes Owen in the secondary and down two with a chung tackle at about the 29-yard line. On a burst of 14 yards and another first down for Jacksonville. Take a look at this right side here. You're going to see it. Look, they block out and they're able to turn out here. They get to the second level. And just everyone is getting good blocks on this Patriots defense. This is the way this Patriots defense struggled in the first half against the 49ers one week ago. Marquise Cole is playing in as the fifth defensive back here. Here's a first and ten underneath Owens. And brought down by Kyle Arrington. 
It is a gain of 12 and a catch and run to the 17 of the New England Patriots. You just saw the graphic which shows this Jacksonville Jaguar offense have gone 25 consecutive games without scoring a touchdown on the opening drive. That's the longest streak in the National Football League. But right now against the Patriots defense that a lot of people thought would have improved so deep into the month of December right now allowing this Jaguar offense to go right down the field. First down and 10. Drives to the back at the 22. Big play, a pass of 18 to Blackman. And he once again, again underneath. And again, he finds a tight end with a nice catch. The former Pro Bowler out of UCLA. That's Mercedes Lewis down to about the 8th. That's a pickup of 9. And well, shy of a first down, Solomon, by about a yard. Yeah, and boy, Mike Malarkey's offense taking advantage of some maneuvering that we talked about on this Patriots defense. Remember, Brandon Spikes out at the middle linebacker position. You just saw Rob Ninkovich matched up against the receiver in space. McCourty starting at cornerback. Kyle Arrington, normally not a starter, also starting today in place of dinner. Still playing in the nickel. Here's the defense of New England, second down and one. Murphy to about the three and a first down, hit by Marquise Cole. Gain of five, first and goal on the opening drive of the game for Jacksonville. Boy, they've got some nice blocking scheme going on up front for this Jacksonville Jaguar football team. Mike Malarkey, he's an excellent play caller. You can see zero touchdowns in their last six red zone possessions. Last week, they were 0 for 4 down inside the red zone against the Miami Dolphins. The one thing this team has done, they can move the ball, but they've struggled down inside the red zone. If they can score here early against the Patriots, boy, they're getting off to a good start, and I think it's going to do a lot for their confidence. Cole taking out. Trevor Scott put on that line. So that's the change defensively for the Pats. First and goal for three. That's caught for a touchdown in the back of the end zone as McCourty was trying to stay with Justin Blackman. A three-yard touchdown pass, and just like that, the 2-12 and 12 Jaguars, one of the worst offenses in the NFL, work right into the teeth of New England's D. All right, Blackman comes in as their leading receiver. He's a rookie working to the right. Look, he beats Devin McCourty badly. He was wide open, Kevin. The coverage wasn't even close on his fourth touchdown reception. Just an excellent drive by the Jacksonville Jaguar. Nine plays, they go 78 yards, mixing in run and pass. And he was a perfect six of six on that drive with Josh Scobie now gonna try for the extra point. The holder is the punter, Anger. And seven nothing, Jacksonville on top. They had a pass of 18 to Blackman. Shorts caught a pass for a 10 yard catch and run. Owens had a run of 14. They find Blackman in the back of the end zone for six. Nikoff winner at Oklahoma State. He was the number five overall pick, the number one wide receiver, Blackman. Nice drive led by Henny, six of six. But what about the secondary changes of the Patriots trying to feel their way through that first drive? Well, with the key to lead out, he's not starting today. That takes their best cornerback off the field. You move Devin McCourty from the free safety position to corner. He, in my mind, with his range and his instincts, now you take their second best player in the defense and move him out of position. Here's Slater. He's going to return the kickoff, and that McCourty is the norm, and Slater brings it up. It's a 20-yard return, which will open the door for 35-year-old Tom Brady. When we come back to Northern Florida, 9:29 in the first. St. John's River here in Jacksonville. Patriots won a Super Bowl here about eight years ago. First and ten. A little play action by Tom. Incomplete and they go outside. Flag is down. They were aiming on the play for Brandon Lloyd, who's been red hot for this ball club over the last couple games. A combined 17 receptions as Jeff Triplett and his crew will officiate today. Pass interference. Defense number 21. Oh. Ball will be placed in the spot of the foul. First down. That's uh, Derek Cox. So here's Tom Brady. Just his first practice of the season this past week, Wednesday. Shoulder rest was the reason given. He was back Thursday. He threw for a career 65 times against San Francisco. And you may not think it's a big deal, but Tom Brady will be the first to tell you that. Practice time is very important when you talk about the precision of the passing game, the ability to work the tempo, something I think we expect to see today. Stephen Ridley in the backfield. He gets a call here on first down, and he's brought down in the secondary by Dewan Landry after a gain of three up to the 33-yard line. All five starters in their third consecutive game together on the offensive line. First time that's happened all season. Mankins leading the way right there. Rob Gronkowski still out, although he's been practicing for about 10 days. Wide receiver Wes Welker at 100 receptions. An NFL record fifth consecutive season. 
Terrific. Second down and seven. Coleman with the block at the right tackle in time for Brady, who's got Ridley and is bobbled and intercepted on the deflection. Krasinski gets the ball. Turnover. And the guy that's been having some fumbling issues, Ridley, on runs, can't reel this bobbled attempt from Brady to him down the sideline. Krasinski gets it. Jags have it. 8.49 in the first. As we return to Everbank Field here in Jacksonville, here's Stephen Ridley. He's going to come out of the backfield, and then here's Russell Allen in coverage. Tom Brady's going to give Ridley an opportunity to come down with the ball. He doesn't fight to get back to it, but good coverage by Allen. Then Chris Brzezinski, you'll see the safety. He'll come in, get the tip ball, and intercept Tom Brady. It's Brady's first interception now against these Jacksonville Jaguars. Amazing. Patriots will open up in the nickel. Cole will be the fifth defensive back from the 47 of Jacksonville. First down and 10 for Chad Henney and the Jacksonville O leading on a three-yard touchdown pass. And a quick flag and a quick toss on the slant. And they go here to Shorts. He was brought down by Cole. Gain of eight, but the flag was thrown back at about the 44. The game was to the 45 of New England on that first down throw. Offside defense number 75. That penalty is declined. It's on the play. Second down. Will Fork. Mike Malarkey understands they have a golden opportunity to jump out on top of this Patriots team. 14 nothing after getting the turnover. They've struggled to turn these turnovers into points for the Jacksonville Jaguar. Remember now, New England number one by a mile in terms of the giveaway takeaway in the NFL. Plus 22, even after last week. Second down and two. Rontel Owen hit by Hightower with his third tackle of the game. Hightower had a good game against San Francisco. That's a gain of five, and they'll put him inside the 41, a first down for Jacksonville. On the last six opponent turnovers, Jacksonville Jaguars has only scored once. So normally after getting these turnovers, they haven't been able to manufacture points. Anytime you get the ball on a short field against a Patriots team or any other team, you've got to be able to turn those turnovers into points on the score field. Down in 10. To lead, by the way, is suited up, and he is on the sideline. We saw him in three game warm-ups, but uh, as Solomon has told you, and we've seen already, he is not starting today. Hip injury. First and 10. Henning. Incomplete. Outside. McCourty was watching Blackman at about the 34-yard line. And thought your fantasy season was over? It's not. NFL playoff challenge is back and better than ever. You could win a trip to Super Bowl 48 in 2014. Play at NFL.com slash fantasy. That is first incompletion. Here is a second down in 10 after the interception on a deflected ball by Krasinski. Starting in the secondary today for an injured player for the Jaguars. Montel Owens again. Good block by Mercedes Lewis, the tight end. And down to the 29-yard line. Tackle was made by Cole. A gain of 11 on the play by Owens. First and 10. Surprising how well. Look at they block down here with Monroe, and then that's where the hole is created. The kick out block by the tight end, Mercedes Lewis, but that left side of the offensive line just collapsed. The defense for the New England Patriots. Their ability to both run it and passing surprisingly well so far in this game. Hoddle stays intact for the offense, as you can see. First down and 10 from the 29 yard line of New England. He's seen a little bit in a lot of this New England defense. Well, he's taking his time trying to keep the ball away from that Patriots offense. Looking for shorts across the way. Arrington was there with the coverage at about the 19-yard line. Second down and 10. And remember, Tom Brady talked about, we, we talked to him about the rhythm and tempo of the game. He said we reeled off 93 offensive plays against the 49ers last week. And I think what Jacksonville is doing by going no huddle, they're slowing it down. They want to keep the ball away from Tom Brady, take time off the clock, and put points on the scoreboard. Over the course of four quarter, at this pace, they'll keep those offensive snaps for the Patriots somewhere around 50. Richard Murphy is in, and he is stopped as he tries to take it in. Cole was there. Will Fork had a hand on him. Loss of three on the play, and it goes back to the 33. Yeah, Marquise Cole is one of the corner seeing action now with Dennard out, key to lead out. So he's playing that slot corner in the nickel package, which means he has to factor in on the run game, Kevin. If they're going to run it at the nickel corner, you've got to be able to come up and make tackles 
in the run zone. And the DB has come in, Tavon Wilson, and on the line, rookie Justin Francis defensively for New England. It's third down and three for the Patriot 32. Third down and 13. Penny. And Mercedes Lewis knocked out of bounds across the way. Wilson is the one to usher him. Gain of nine on that third and 13. Now fourth down, they'll have to try for three. Well, Wilson comes into the game, and look at Lewis. You know, he's 6'6", 240-plus pounds. We always wonder why did, didn't he have even more production. I think when you get matched up against someone like Wilson where you have a height advantage, I think Lewis has got to win a high percentage amount of time. Here's Josh Scobie. You can see he's had a very uh, nice season so far. A 41-yard field goal try. Negligible wind inside the stadium today. The old Gator Bowl. Three more on the board and a 10-0 lead for Jacksonville. 5.43 in the first. This is going to raise some eyebrows around the NFL. Mike Malarkey's team up by 10. Back in Jacksonville, aerial coverage of today's game is provided by DirecTV. As we said, this was the place where the New England Patriots won their last Super Bowl, and Ian Branch was the Super Bowl MVP. That was some eight years ago. Wow. <laughs> that, was a, that was quite some time. McCourty is now back, and this ball is going to go out of the end zone and a touchback to the 20. It'll be first down and 10 for Tom Brady. You take a look at some of the numbers in the early going here in North Florida. Time of possession is critical because, you know, Tom Brady and this Patriots offense, they want to reel off more plays. They only have two plays so far in this game and hold the ball for only 45 seconds. I think it's a testament to the game plan for Mike Malarkey and the Jacksonville Jaguars. And right now, they're not only winning that battle, but they're winning the one on the scoreboard. Ridley is out there. He's in motion to the bottom of his screen. First and 10 for Brady in the offense at their own 20-yard line. Over 4,000 yards passing for Tom once again. Good try on the far side for Lloyd. Defended by Cox. Second down and 10. Jason Babin was let go by Philadelphia a month ago. Signed by Jacksonville. Became an instant starter and has made an instant impact on this defense. Here's Daryl Smith now. He is back with the team. His season debut. He missed the first 14 games with a groin injury and subsequent surgery. In the secondary, Dwight Lowry out with a foot injury. And the guy who made the interception back on that first New England possession. Chris Brzezinski has taken his place. Second down and 10. Good time. And down the middle they go. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. makes the grab and takes it all the way down for a 32-yard catch and run to the 48-yard line of Jacksonville. Oh, uh, Manawahu, you see him coming right here up the seam. It's a play-action fake. The threat of the run game that we talked about at the top in our eye vision. When they fake the run game, they'll get open at the second level, and they'll always get it to this guy, Kevin. Manawanui. I've got to get his name straight. As they go outside, seven-yard gain. That's Welker on that first down and ten. Put him at the 41-yard line. Second down and three. Ridley with a block by Hernandez. The thousand-yard rusher takes it. Allen brings him down. And the tackle is made at the 25, a burst of 16, and a first down. And you notice what Brady has done in this possession? They're going up-tempo. And this is an off-tackle play behind Volmer. Blocking on the right side, but look, they're snapping the ball again and running off plays. Ridley again has the first down as he goes off the right side. Pickup of seven down to the 17-yard line. The pace, the tempo of this offense is something to watch. Yeah, we talked to Tom Brady about it last night. He said, we believe in our conditioning. Our players can adapt and adjust. Now we're going to test their ability to stay with us. Second down, three, Ridley. In the secondary, hit by Przinski, taken down at the nine. That's another first down run and a gain of nine right there. He had a 16-yard run, Ridley did, earlier in the drive. It forces the defense to get their calls in early, to get set at the line of scrimmage. Tom Brady's going to try to catch him off balance. First and goal, Ridley, hit by middle linebacker Paul Pazlesny. It's a gain of two. He speeds it up and speeds it up for everybody, not just the Jacksonville Jaguars, but the cameraman for everyone who's involved in shooting the game. We have to be in position, try to keep up and catch up to Tom Brady. He's orchestrating this offense, and boy, he's going to just try to pick this defense apart. You leave, you leave someone uncovered, he'll find them, and it's a touchdown. Second down and goal at the seven. 
Flags go to back at the 20. Brady looking for Hernandez. Krasinski was covering. No yellow on the field. Incomplete pass. It's great covered by Krasinski. Not many can stay with Hernandez down inside the red zone. You see him right there in the slot. But watch him try to undercut the route. If it's thrown flat, he's going to have a good angle to pick it off. He only allowed Brady to get that ball in in one area. It had to be the perfect throw in order for that one to be a touchdown. No go back to Hernandez or Welker in this situation. Woodhead bottom of your screen in motion. Third and goal at the seventh. Woodhead had a terrific game against San Francisco last week. Brady, incomplete, looking for Lloyd, coverage on the play by Derek Cox. It's fourth and goal, they're going to try for three. Now see, I think Brady understands he wanted, of course, the receiver. Here it is right here. He thought he was going to go flat, and Lloyd saying, hey, put it over the top, because Cox undercuts the route. When Once he undercuts it, see, once he undercuts it, you have to get it over the top for the touchdown. It was really just good coverage by Cox, throwing off the timing between the quarterback, Tom Brady, and his wide receiver, Brandon Lowe. Uh oh Manuwanui was the one who made a big play on that drive. That's a 25-yard field goal. Uh oh Manuwanui had a 32-yard reception from Brady. Patriots are on the board. Brady with Mallet there in the way. Josh McDaniels, good. Look, he's shaking that right hand. We've got a replay of where we think he hurt his hand on a Babin hit after a throw on that last drive, which culminated on a 25-yard field goal by Peskowski. And here is Stevens' subsequent kickoff, which will go on the move. It's Murphy. Out of LSU, some blockers ahead and brought down by Arrington. And by Ebner. 32-yard return. Here it is once again. Yeah, Jason Babin coming in. He'll get the spin move. Now watch the right hand right there. He takes a whack on it. Babin comes in to wrap him up. You'll see Brady will get up. He'll start shaking it off. Trying to recover, but he did throw more pass plays on that drive to get him into the field goal range. So he's battling. He's going to try to shake it off. Remember, he rested this week because he was having some arm problems, at least some fatigue in that throwing shoulder. Murphy's in the backfield. They're going up against the nickel. It is first down and 10. You can see the avalanche of defenders and a big hit there with a the gain of one on the play by Gerard Mayo. He is the leading tackler for New England. And the ball at the 35-yard line. So we're going to see a contrast in styles. We're going to see the Patriots try to speed this game up. And we're going to see Chad Henney try to slow it down, lead the clock, and limit the opportunities for Tom Brady and his offense. Love and Wilfork will be in that down position. Chandler Jones will be the third guy. Minkovic, as we told you before, taking the place of the injured Brandon Spikes today. And if you're joining us late to leave, not starting, hip injury, but suited up and can play. Second down and nine. Shipley, oh, and he's got the seam, and he's off to the races. Chased by Cole, knocked out of bounds on the play. Also, Gregory trying to stop him on a 36-yard catch and run to the Patriot 29. Oh, watch this. This is going to be a nice, go ahead and roll it. He'll come across the formation. And take a look at this one. Cole's in chase. And there is also Chung, who can't prevent the catch. Just a nice throw and catch in the secondary right now for the Patriots to struggle. Good block by the left tackle, Monroe. They're going deep. McCourty was watching Blackman. That is an incompletion. Second down and 10 as we send this pass to New York and James Brown. Steelers need to win to stay alive for the postseason. Debbie, you remember in overtime last week, being through a pick. This time, Leon Hall does the honor. 17 yards into the end zone. Steelers are on top, 7-0 over the Steelers. Well, since he went, and they're in. Kevin and Solomon. All right, James, thank you. Here's second down and 10. We've had two consecutive scores for Jacksonville. Interception on a deflected ball for Brady. Murphy will take it again. And they've got all kinds of guys making the stop. Chandler Jones on top, and also a stop there by Patrick Chung. It's a gain of four by Murphy Solomon down to the 25. All right, Mike Malarkey's drawing up an excellent game plan. He's taking advantage of some of the coverage matchups. He feels that Shipley can get open with his quickness. We've already seen Cecil Shorts and Justin Blackman uh, working the offense as well. Henny's doing a really good job of slowing the game down, 
He's surveying the defense, really taking his time. The protection is holding up, and I think that's the key right now for the Jaguars offense. Wilson's coming in the secondary. Francis on the line, third and six for Chad Henney with time and incomplete. Mercedes Lewis was crossing at about the 15. The coverage there was provided by Chung and by Wilson. It'll be fourth down and six, and again, they'll try for three. Yeah, but still good protection. And watch Henny. He's able to step up in the pocket. And he just throws this one a little too soon as Chung cuts off Lewis. Lewis can't allow himself to be cut off from that ball. He expected Lewis to continue across the field and go make the catch. So the big play on this drive was to the wide receiver, Jordan Shipley. He's a Colt McCoy's big target down in Texas. Again with the Cincinnati Bengals. 36-yard catch and run for him. And this sends up a 43-yard field goal try, which will not be good. A miss. Only the third of the season for Scobie. The snap came from Jeremy Kane. Let's watch it here and see. A little bit low. Saved by the rookie punter and holder, Anger. But he's wide left. They miss from 43. They can't cash in. So now the Patriots will begin it at their own 33 and decent beginning field position. Wasn't perfect, but I don't think it was enough to throw off the timing. You still got to go ahead and make those. But well, right now, the Jaguars are getting great opportunities to put points on the board against this Patriots defense. Ridley in the backfield, first down and 10. Hello, Manawanui is in motion. Bomber will try to block, as will Kyler. Then they've got all kinds of guys stacking him up, bringing him down. Alu Alu on the defensive line. Led the brigade along with Juan Landry. There is no gain. It is second down and 10. Oh, they've already tried to get the ball over to Brandon Lowy, have the Patriots, and he told me it took some time to adjust because the three years he was with Josh McDaniel, it was a perimeter offense, and here they like to throw it to the tight ends, like to get it to Wes Welker. He has to be patient on the outside to create big plays. Second down to about 10, Welker finds the gap. Locked down by Russell, who tried to strip him of the ball out to the 45-yard line. Pickup of 11. That is a Patriot first down. This Patriots offense is predicated on high percentage throws. Wes Welker, 100 catches coming into today's game, and they've only played 14 of them. So he's going to catch a lot over the middle. Good block by Rangel. The center that buys time for Brady. Another pick. This one is taken by Derek Cox whose first career interception was off Peyton Manning, and now he can put Brady on that list, too. Brady is picked off for a second time in three possessions. Now watch at the top of your screen, right here at the bottom. Cox will undercut. He'll go right over the top shoulder. He out-fights Brandon Lloyd for the football. And Lloyd didn't even expect him to knife in underneath to be able to make that grab. That was a trusting throw from Tom Brady. I'm not so sure that he even saw Cox with that kind of position to be able to step in front of Brandon Lloyd to intercept that ball. Great catch in terms of ball skills for Derek Cox. Tlaib is in at the corner now. First time he has played today. First down and 10 after the pick. Fake end around. Time for any outside. Oh, no, he's got room to run. Mayo can't get him. Pass to try to throw a block. Owens on the move and to the Jacksonville 20. Making the New England 21-yard line a 55-yard catch and run. And that's how the first quarter comes to a close. Two Brady interceptions. Jacksonville by seven at the end of one on CBS. That is a pretty impressive note there on Jacksonville's first quarter offensive output. Oh, they're rolling up some plays. They're, they're making plays. Henny, I think, is off to a great start. 10 of 14 so far in the ball game. They have a good mix of run and pass. And when they get the ball in the open field, they're breaking tackles and ripping off huge chunks of yards. Tlaib is out. Another linebacker is in, Tracy White. First down and 10 from the 21. Henny inside shorts. Cecil Shorts makes the stop. The tackle was made by McCordy. There you see Owens here. That's just going to be a, a screen play. They misdirection, but when they get him to the outside, look, he outflanks the entire defense. So it's just clear selling up the sideline. He'll cut it back up the middle, but 53 yards on the catch and run. Great design on the screen play to outflank the defense for a big play. Did you see Tlaib holding his left hip as he was running in, in pursuit? That was, uh, was painful to watch. Second down and one. Richard Murphy 
Hit, hit on the play. It is a gain of three. That Gregory was down there. Also, Trevor Scott getting off the pile. Gain of three as it stands right now with the ball at the nine-yard line, and the flag was thrown in that vicinity. Holding. 84 offense. 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. So that's going to push it back now, making it second down and 11. Schwartz well, had a 10-yard reception moments ago. No, it's no surprise. Mike Malarkey, when we spoke with him, he says, hey, this Patriots defense has given up more explosive plays than any other defense in the NFL. And already they've ripped off huge chunks with his play calling. Francis on that defensive line, second down and 11. They get by Wimper. Low throw, which is aiming outside, is going to be incomplete. Are they? Did he, he caught the ball? It was a grab, and it was made by the tight end, Mercedes Lewis. The coverage on the play by Chung. The ball's going to be thrown to that low outside because they thought Chung might break on this and intercept it. It's thrown late to the outside of the numbers, and that's why you have to throw it low and to the outside where the defender can't get it. It's a really good catch by the 6'6", Mercedes Lewis. Picking that one off his shoestring. Good catch. Gain of five on the play. He was the Mackey Award winner at UCLA. A high pick by this franchise. Third and six now. Interception by Cox is given Jacksonville. This possession. Look out from the side as the wobbly pass is over the head of Blackman. And the coverage on the play by McCourty. It looked like Francis was bearing down the rookie out of Rutgers. And they got to try for three once again. And he was drilled. Wow. Coming in from the blind side. And he getting rid of this football just in the nick of time because he does take a hit and had he held it for just another beat that ball is going to flutter up maybe for an interception but put pressure that time by the Patriots defense Trevor Scott got a hand in there with a hit Francis in his grill now that forces the fourth down and a 35 yard field goal try from Josh Doby he missed last time and this one is good from 35 so they cash in on the interception of Brady by Derek Cox. They've got three points off turnover, make it six off turnovers, and lead by ten. Brady picked off twice. They've gotten two field goals off those turnovers. They'd like to get more, but uh, they're making some headway here, and they lead by ten to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And even though over 200 yards total offense for Jacksonville in the first quarter, something says it's not nearly enough. <laughs> we, we've seen the Patriots, boy, come to life like what we saw in the second half against the 49ers on Sunday night. Slater and Vereen were back to get this kickoff. McCourty was back there last time, normally is, was the second kickoff, but not this. Coming up in the Verizon Halftime Report, J.B., Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cowell. The latest NFL scores, highlights, and news, all coming up in the Verizon Halftime Report from our CBS studios in New York. So they've made a change right there. Two turnovers and three Patriot possessions. Here comes Brady again, first and ten from his 20. Now, I don't think the interception thrown to Cox was a result of his hand being banged up. It was just a bad decision. Going go up the middle here. Brandon Bolden is the running back who brings it up and picks up two on the play. And they'll put him at about the 21-22 yard line. Hit on the play by Minson. Now, Brady's been intercepted twice. The first one on a tipped pass should not have been intercepted. I think the ball should have been caught by Stephen Ridley. But on that second interception, I think he's got to have a better feel for where the defender is and the leverage he has on the intended receiver, Brandon Lloyd, and not make the commitment to throw the football there. Brady on second down and nine. Throws it away. The pressure was coming right up the middle. Babin was pressing. Knighton up the middle, incomplete third and nine. Now what did Jacksonville tell us they want to do? They want to move Tom Brady off the spot, force him to check the ball down, and not allow yards after the catch. Clearly, pressure in his face, forcing him to move his position. And when a quarterback like Tom Brady has to move around a lot, he tends to be less accurate throwing the football. You allow him to settle in, he will get hot and shred your defense. We're hitting the... Offensive backfield with Brady. Third down and nine. Extra defensive back is in there. Aaron Ross, the former New York Giant. Brady hit by Knighton. Bounces away. Throws it away. Welker in his sights. Covered on the play by Landry. Three and out. They got to punt the ball. 
I don't know that anyone moves better in the pocket than Tom Brady. Just to buy a little more time. Look, he's going nowhere, but he's moving. He's resetting, making defenders miss. But he didn't move and change his launch point that much. Babin is hitting hard now twice in this ball game. Right now, he's just struggling to find some receivers who are getting separation and getting open at the second level. Zoltan Mesko to point to a punt for the New England Patriots. And deep back will be Jordan Shipley. He had a 36-yard catch and run a little bit earlier in the game, and he's back to retrieve this one at about the 32. He got by Slater. And then he was belted on the play. Bolden was right there. Also, Rivera. Eight-yard return, 47-yard punt. And he back out there for Jacksonville. After the three and out by New England, first and ten, Jacksonville at the 40-yard line. Chung is on the sideline. Tavon Wilson has taken his place for safety. This is on the defensive line with Scott. Here's Murphy. First down and ten. Ninkovich brings him down near the 48-yard line. That's a burst of eight yards for Jacksonville. Well, Chad Henney has led this Jaguars offense to more yards of total offense in the first quarter than any previous team. He's been red hot. 12 of 17. We told you, having played against the Patriots in the AFC East when he was in Miami, very familiar with this Patriots defense. Look, Tom Brady trying to get his guys fired up before this game slips away. So he just come in top of your screen, second down and two. Jones in the backfield for Henning. He's taking every tick off that 25 second clock. Angel Owens. Right there by Waneri. Not much right there. White with the tackle. Gain of one. All right, Tony Romo, warm. Seventh consecutive game, 11 times this season, JB. Dez Bryant have a touchdown reception. This one from Tony Romo, 58 yards away. Tie ball game, Saints, Cowboys, 7-7. Seven, seven. Shannon, I thought having a fractured finger was supposed to hurt you. Tape him up, let's play. All right, back to Kevin and Solly. All right, James, third down and one right here. Penny. Over the head of Shipley with the coverage on the play by Arrington on the near side. That's a three and out for Jacksonville after the Patriot three and out. Oh, and he knows he should have converted this one. He had the receiver open. There was separation. So whenever you get that much space, you got to go ahead and make that throw. It was just an inaccurate pass by Henny. We'd said he can get red hot, but he can also go cold over the course of a ball game. Ryan Anger is a rookie on the right, and he's got to NFL rookie records right now riding with his gross and his net punting, Walker is back to retrieve it for the pass inside the 10-yard line. Walker from about the 8. And jumping on his back and making the stop after the 10-yard return was Antoine Blake. He's a rookie. Brady back out there for New England. Are your favorite superstar performers on our acting legend, Dustin Hoffman, king of late night, David Letterman, and one of the great rock bands of all time, Led Zeppelin, the Kennedy Center Honors, Wednesday only on CBS. Woodhead in the backfield after the Jacksonville three and out, first and 10, 18 yard line. Up the middle he goes, as you can see, with a gain of two and hit on the play by Jason Babbitt. Oh, Patriots offense, their first four possessions, two turnovers, they get one field goal, then they go three and out. And nothing upsets Bill Belichick more than to see turnovers after committing a season-high four turnovers last week against the 49ers. They start this game with turnovers on two of their first three possessions. Bolden comes in on second down and eight. Running ball on the call. Blocked by Mankin. Game of four. Knighton had a hand on him. And Jason Babin, also with a hit, finally Landry nails him. You might ask, what is the Jacksonville Jaguars doing to sort of stalemate this New England Patriots offense? Uh, first of all, if you were to talk to the Patriots right now, they'd say, no, we're doing it to ourselves. We're turning the ball over. And on the defense, we're not tackling. We're not keeping guys in front of us. Bill Belichick coaching them up every single area of this football team. Third and four, Solder with the block at the left tackle, Aaron Hernandez on the move, Krasinski makes the stop, the game near the 38, catch and run of 14, New England a much needed first down. They have much needed first down, Tom Brady's going to go back to doing what he does best, Kevin, that's getting the ball to the tight ends like Aaron Hernandez, getting the ball to Wes Welker in the slot. This offense is predicated on high percentage throws 
to the slot receiver in Wes Welker and the tight end Aaron Hernandez. That's why they really do miss Rob Gronkowski as we take a look at Mr. Kraft. He visited us in the booth before the game. Always a pleasure to talk with him. First down and 10 from the 37-yard line. The catch on the near side by Dion Branch, hit by Rasheen Mathis. A gain of six on the play to the 43. Jordan Kraft there on the right. Bob Kraft on the left. Great friend to CBS, of course. He always stops by to say hello to you, doesn't he? Uh, because you're here by myself. <laughs> Second down and four. Ooh, a big hit by Krasinski. Catch and a good hold on there by Dion Branch. And a field he's familiar with. He was the Super Bowl MVP here. Gain of six. Any of these New England Patriots, when we talked to them last night, they said, one thing about the Jacksonville Jaguars, their 2-12 two and 12 record, who does not tell the story. They're still fighting. They're still playing hard. I think you could see on that hit by Krasinski. The Jacksonville Jaguars now, they've got some fight in them. First and ten, Bolden in the backfield. And incomplete. Cox was covering the wide receiver, Brandon Lloyd. At about the 35 or so, second and ten. We got to give Cox a lot of credit. That's the comeback route to the outside. Watch him break on the ball. And Lloyd can't get much separation. He drifts a little bit on that route. Can work back toward the ball a little bit more. You can't allow the defender to cut underneath you to get to the football. That's the fourth time they've thrown to Lloyd. Yet no reception, second down and ten. Screen, Woodhead, Yankees trying to throw a block. Woodhead making great moves inside the 30. 24-yard catch and run. Tackled by Pazwazny. Spot him at the 27. Well, this offense is doing this, throwing the ball inside. We talked about the tight end. We talked about Wes Welker. And now Danny Woodhead as the check down runner. Catches the ball out of the backfield. Can break tackles and make play. Woodhead on first and 10. Trying to cut the corner. And again, stopped across the way. And the tackle made by Daryl Smith after a gain of four to the 23 of Jacksonville. And the up-tempo style. As you can take a look, Danny Woodhead, one of two NFL players with four rushing touchdowns and two receiving touchdowns. Arian Foster is the other. So that's pretty good company for Danny Woodhead. Holden is in, four in the secondary, second down and six. Hesitation and the stop right there by Jeremy Mincy. 94 was the first big hit. Loss of a couple on the play, and they'll push him back to about the 25-26 yard line. Excellent penetration by Mincy. He, he foiled that play all by himself. Beating the offensive lineman off the line of scrimmage, getting penetration into the backfield. Now Tom Brady facing a third and eight. This is when they look to go to West Welker in the scene. They'll go to Aaron Hernandez. And also, you got to pay attention to Danny Woodhead coming out of the backfield. Tenth play of the drive, third and eight. Hernandez may have been offside. Hernandez gets that catch, though, as he got inside the defensive back. Harris down to about the 11-yard line. 14-yard catch, but I think Hernandez may have jumped a little bit early. Let's yeah, see. A little bit antsy. Showing blitz. Want to get off the ball. Win at the line of scrimmage. Got to wait for the ball to be snapped. Illegal motion. Offense, number 81. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. That is the first penalty on the Patriots. And here he is right there. See him moving a little quick. Boy, oh, that hurts. They were coming after Tom Brady. The protection held up on the blitz. Danny Woodhead stepped up and took on the blitzing linebacker, buying time for Brady to make the completion. Mathis is the fifth defensive back for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Third and 13. They need the 17. Brady gets by one. He got by Russell Allen. That's almost picked up by Pence Lesney. That's incomplete. Fourth and 13, they'll try for three. Boy, the pressure comes right up the middle. There is Allen right there. And he's going to miss. Look at Brady's moving in the pocket, but Mincy recovers. Comes in from the blind side. Was able to get that ball 
tipped just the, as it left the hand of Tom Brady. Nearly intercepted for the third time in this ball game. I mean, they moved him off the spot, Kevin. That's what the Jaguars want to do defensively. 49 yards right now by Beskowski. And he just slips it in the upright. Good one from 49 yards away. Hernandez, a 14-yard catch and run. Wood had a 24-yard catch and run, setting up the field goal. Patriots offensive resume today, two interceptions, two field goals, and a three and out. As they're looking at the pictures across the way and Tom Brady. For the Jacksonville Jaguars, they had shots at scoring the first four times they had it. They just missed a field goal, but they knocked one through for 41-35. They got a three-yard touchdown pass to Blackman. And on the run, here comes the reserve running back, Tolkien. This is the number. That's a nice tackle made on the play by Bolden. 15-yard return. This is number four kickoff return coverage team in the NFL of New England. Nobody knows the game like a quarterback. Break down all the NFL action on NFL Monday QB tomorrow, 6.30 Eastern. Only on CBS Sports, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. CBS Sports Network bringing you that. And the player is down. And the player down for Jacksonville, former Giant, Greg Jones. We take a timeout. Greg Jones had five starts for the Giants a season ago as a rookie. He was let go. He was signed by this Jacksonville team in mid-November. They help him off the field, as you can see, on that kickoff return. And so now Jacksonville begins it from their 21. First down and 10 to lead is out there. And also remaining in the secondary in place of Chung is Tavon Wilson. First and 10. Chung was a starter. Until Owens, blocked by Lewis. Flag is thrown. Wilson makes the stop. They usher him out of bounds. Tlaib over there as well. As it stands now, it's a game of three near the 24. This is what the Jaguars don't need. Holding number 89, the offense. 10-yard penalty to the first down. Yeah, the holding on Mercedes Lewis. And if you're the Jacksonville Jaguars, if you take a look at their numbers, they need to put together a drive. They need to eat time off the clock with about five minutes to go here in the half. You don't want to give the ball back to Tom Brady here at the end of the second half. You want to be able to sustain drive. They're bleeding the 25-second clock, trying to take their time, but they're going to have to pick up a couple of first downs if they're not going to give the ball back to Brady and his offense. In the nickel, first and 20. And he Cecil Shorts. Oh, that's rare. Tlaib was over there covering. Uh, you don't see that often from Cecil Shorts. And Mike Malarkey, they said no one saw Cecil Shorts having the kind of year that he's having now in his second season out of Mount Union College. This ball's thrown on the money by Henny and just took his eye off of it for a little bit. We told you he was used to creating yards after the catch. He was looking for a catch and run opportunity there. Jacksonville, their 37th drop pass so far this season. That's the most in the AFC. Second down and 20 for Jacksonville. Penny. This is grabbed by Isaiah Stanbeck, promoted from the practice squad to the active roster this week. It's a gain of six on the play. And let's see, they got him at the 17. Talk about catch and run for Cecil Shorts. It was the catch and run that broke the back of the Patriots in that game winner. Over to Michael Crabtree in front of Kyle Arrington in the fourth quarter of the ball game one week ago. They believe they can make some plays against this Patriot secondary, and they come in less than 100% without dinner, without a key to lead. So, oh, hopes are high for Jacksonville. Third and 14, the blitz was on. That is almost intercepted on the deflection going for Shipley. Big time hit in the secondary, coming through, fourth and 14. They got to go Tracy White. Yeah, Henny is very lucky this ball wasn't intercepted. If Shipley doesn't get a hand on it, see how it just flutters? That ball is going to be intercepted. Looked like Akeem Tlaib may have had an opportunity to get a hand on it. But Shipley tips it up. Look at that. <laughs> Number 31, Akeem Tlaib. Seems like he always has his hand on that hip. That's bothering me. It hurts. <laughs> yeah, I gotta watch it. Here's Welker. 
driven all the way back to about the 18-yard line. They pick the reverse with French, and then he is brought down on the play. The toast in 35 got a hand on it, but the first hit was put on it by Antoine Blake, who's out of Texas, El Paso. 15-yard return, 65-yard punt. Let's take a look at the playoff picture as uh, we see the AFC and where the Patriots are right now, number three. That means if they finish there, they would not have a first-round bye. And the Cincinnati Bengals, their 7 nothing lead over the Pittsburgh Steelers right now. If they win, they clinch a playoff berth. Very significant for the Cincinnati Bengals. Daniel Fells is now in as a tight end after the three and out by Jacksonville. First and ten. A good block by Wendell. There's well, uh, Fells who makes the grab. That's just the fourth reception of the season for the former Denver Bronco. It's a gain of eight. And the center, Ryan Wendell, came through and made a really nice block to afford that time to Brady. Second and two. Woodhead. Back by Conley. And up two with a ball close to a first down, up to near the 44-yard line. Looks like he's going to be a little bit shy. They're going to have to go for it here on third down. See, see, yeah, it's going to be just a little bit short. See if they run it again or if Brady take matters into his own hands. Bring it in to heavy people. Oh, uh, Manawanui comes in as a fullback. Also coming in is Ridley. Now we're going to put... Well, when I knew he was a tight end and he's in motion as you see on the third and one. Oh, it was directly snapped to the running back, and that's Ridley. Knocked the hit on the play because was the gain of two, but enough for a first down to the 45-yard line. Wow, this is a neat looking play. Direct snap, as you mentioned. Steven Ridley, they'll bring the backside tackle, Sebastian Vollmer. He comes around. Look at Vollmer out in front. And he's just able to get the edge on plus lessening and fall forward for the first down. It was a ball handling issues for Ridley is a story certainly in New England. First and ten. The defensive backs will get a quick pull there, does Krasinski on the wide receiver, Wes Welker. Gain of six on the play right at midfield, and we've reached the two-minute warning. Brady is 9 of 18 with two picks. In the pass down. And coming up the Verizon halftime report, JB Dan, Shan Boomer, and Coach Cowher. The latest NFL scores and highlights all coming up on the Verizon halftime report. Here's a second down and four. Patriots with three timeouts. Into the nickel, Mathis is the fifth DB, and that's caught by Welker. He's got it, 41-yard line. Coverage on the play by rookie out of Florida State, Mike Harris. A pickup of eight. They'll move the chains first down. Tom Brady is now 10 of 19. How has he gotten back in rhythm? Going to the tight ends, Gonzalez and Fails. Working to the slot receiver, Wes Welker. Danny Woodhead out of the backfield. We talk about high percentage throws. He's getting it going now. Welker, good block on the play by Palmer. Krasinski will make the stop. Smith is there as well. Catch and run to the 31, 11-yard pickup, and that is another first down. Yeah, the little screen pass over to Welker. That's a high percentage throw as well. And the nice catch and run. And that's the one thing Jacksonville said. They had to make the tackles on those catch and run plays. First and 10. Oh, and a nice hit there by Smith. He gets Welker high, 8-yard pickup. And they'll push this ball down to the 22-yard line. This is where the Patriots, I think, just they sort of outsmart everyone else. They make the adjustments, and why aren't the Jaguars making the adjustments when we know where the ball is going? Second and two, and that is Grant. The tackle was made by Cox. The catch was made by Lloyd. It is a gain of eight. It is a first down. They'll put the ball at the 14-yard line of the Jaguars. Can't tell you how quickly Brady goes through his progression. He came all the way backside on the slant route to Brandon Lloyd for that play. We had a long talk with them last night about this, which we'll get into in the second half, because it was really interesting the way they worked their offense in practice. First and ten. Pressure is there. He throws it away, and coming up the middle with another nice play is Bavin, who has really transformed the way they pass rush on the defensive line of Jacksonville, second and ten. thrown in direction of the facility, the eligible receiver, and the quarterback is being affected by the throw. 
And Babin said, hey, they love my energy here. <laughs> I think he was saying something about his former place of, of employment with the Philadelphia Eagles. You see the spin move right there against Nate Solder. Number 77 comes around, put pressure right in the face of Tom Brady. He's been in that backfield for most of the first half. Second and ten, still the Nichols. Would have nice catch. Good looking touchdown. 14 yard play. Woodhead, who's coming off a terrific game last week, maybe his best as a Patriot, has a 14-yard catch-and-run TD right here. Well, Bosworth, look, 56, you've got to get out there. <laughs> you, and you got to be much faster than that. Got to be over there and in coverage, working against Woodhead. Great catch and the ability to maintain his balance and get it in for a touchdown. How about this? You could have a tied ball game on the extra point. Gostowski will try the extra point with seconds remaining in the first half. Away it goes, and through it is, and we are tied. Woodhead had two rushing touchdowns last week against San Francisco. Has his third receiving touchdown of the season right there. Just to tie John Unitas for throwing a touchdown pass in his 47th consecutive game. Oh, that's just amazing. Tied for second on the all-time list behind Drew Brees with 54. Remember, Drew Brees had his record stopped in a Thursday night game where he threw five interceptions against the Atlanta Falcons. So that record is very much in reach for Tom Brady. We'll have to visit that going into the 2013 season. Right now he's just trying to win a ball game in Jacksonville. He's come back to tie, though, and you can see the kickoff picked up by Potter, who's a reserve tight end, and he takes it out to about the 32, 11-yard return on the play. Former college defensive end getting it and bringing it up. Tomorrow on CBS, it may be cold outside, but there's one place that's always oh so hot. Hawaii 5-0, that's tomorrow, and it's only on CBS. Tom Brady was so good, we sat and talked with him last night and he just talked about hey it's the little things when we do the little things right we tend to win ball games communication route depth assignment execution See, if we do that then we can be explosive Time as out. an offense new england their first patriots take a time they had six in the secondary and then he had a chance to look at it and the conversation continues with tom brady on the side with two interceptions and that's they had the four turnovers last week and the two today and that is something so rare for this team like we said before the number one in the nfl in the giveaway takeaway it plus 22 coming into today and they got a wide margin there yeah and what it coming into today's game bill belichick said we have to take care of the ball that's priority number one it's been emphasized all we can practice tom brady gets intercepted twice in the first quarter of the ball game and Turned it around, as you see Josh McDaniels coaching them up, talking to them about what they have to continue to do in the second half. Into the dime, it's a pass which is dropped on the play by Tony Clemens. Some hard hitting in the secondary right there. Chung and others incomplete. Well, this is a good play by Chung. It's not the defenseless hit. See that? See how he led to with his shoulder to the body of Clemens. That's why you can make that kind of physical hit without being flagged for a hit on a defenseless player to the head or shoulder area. Like last year, Chung this season battling injuries. Second down and ten. Good time again. That's caught by Justin Blackman. And he swirls around about the 41-42 yard line on the second down and ten. Jacksonville picks up a timeout here. And they're very close to the first, but as they spot the ball, probably shy by about a half yard. You know, we talked about those two interceptions by Tom Brady in the first quarter. Jacksonville Jaguars, six points off those two turnovers. They had opportunity to get even more. And that's what Tom Brady and the Patriots do. They just grade on you. They wear you down. You have to take full advantage of those opportunities to put even more points on the board. Because sooner or later, they're going to come screaming and clawing their way back into the ball game. Will Fork and Scott will be on the defensive line for New England. Six defensive backs, third and one. Henny, Shipley, a play by Gregory. A smart play by Gregory. He led with the shoulder to the body of a defenseless player. 19-yard pickup, that takes us to halftime. 
We're tied 13-13. Brady a couple picks. Also a touchdown catch and run by Woodhead. You're watching NFL football on CBS, the home of Super Bowl 47. You're listening to a Pepsi NFL anthem by Aerosmith. Download this and other NFL-inspired anthems at PepsiAnthems.com. That is our halftime score. 2-12 and 12 Jacksonville, 10-4 and 4 New England. What do you think of the quarterback play in the first half? Oh, you would expect Tom Brady to come out red hot, but actually it was Chad Henney who came out with the hot hand to begin this football game. He had the early touchdown pass and then over 200 yards total offense for the Jacksonville Jaguars on offense in the first quarter of the ball game. Two interceptions by Tom Brady in the first quarter of this game it really has, I think, hindered their ability to get off to a good start. Jacksonville Jaguars have scored six points off those two interceptions for Tom Brady. The Patriots won the flip of the coin to begin the game. They deferred, so they will take over with the first possession here in the second half as you take a look at the numbers with our quarterbacks, Henny and Tom Brady, a couple of former Michigan Wolverine quarterbacks going at it today. And it was a second round pick by Miami back in 08. Will Parcells was involved with that. Here is now the kickoff to start our second half here in Jacksonville. No chance of rain, about 60 degrees. And they'll leave it in the end zone. Matthew Slater. First and 10 from the 20 yard line for New England. Time of possession has been interesting. The Patriots run more plays per game, 74 on average per game, than any other team in the NFL. And you can see the resume in the first half. And you can also see the slow start in the first half of the ball game. Two interceptions on their first three possessions. They get the field goal, and then they had a three and out. So a slow start, but then on their last two possessions, they get the field goal and a touchdown to tie it up at halftime. You know Tom Brady's going to improve as the game goes on. Molinari is in there as the tight end. First and ten, they go outside here. It's a grab, and it was made with Cox defending on the rolling receiver, Brandon Lloyd, who is with Josh McDaniels, the offensive coordinator in Denver and St. Louis. The trust between Tom Brady and Brandon Lloyd continues to improve, and he talked about Brandon Lloyd just improving in terms of his overall confidence of knowing when to break off routes and where to finish on pass plays. It'll only get better. Quick handoff on second down and one with a gain of five. They bring it up there with Stephen Ridley, a 1,000-yard rusher, taking it up for the first down. Well, Stephen Ridley, you talked about it, Kevin. There was one attempted pass to him where he tipped. That pass was intercepted. But he's got to be more secure with the football. He's had some fumbles in recent weeks. As they head into the postseason, he's got to do a better job on that. They're in the nickel, first and ten. Nice-looking grab right there by Lloyd. A beauty. And he's up near midfield on the play. 16-yard pickup, first down. Yeah, and there you see Lloyd working against Derek Cox, who's been really good in coverage throughout the day. But this one, good timing on the route. Being where Tom Brady expects him to be coming down with the catch. First and ten. Ridley hit, and Mike Harris is the one to make the stop, limiting him to a gain of a yard to the 49. He came up and laid a lick on Ridley. Jaguars defense has come out fighting today. Their football team still has some fight. We talked about it with the 2-12 and 12 record. You know, taking on the challenge to play toe-to-toe -to -toe with the New England Patriots today. Now in the second half, this is where it really gets grimy and becomes more of a physical football game. Nichols still in place defensively, second down and nine. And they find the gap right there. Mathis will make the stop. Another catch on this drive. It's Lloyd for 14 right there. You can see better timing. It's improved now in the second half. Getting right to the spot. Brady cut that one loose early. And Brandon Lloyd just got there. Was able to make the catch. And now they have shown that they can go outside and work the perimeter. We saw in the first half as Brady was keeping it in between the numbers. Working it to the slot receiver, Wes Welker. Tight end and to the backs. First and ten. Ridley got by Alu Alu and is in the secondary. And then brought down about the 18-yard line. It's a pickup of 12. Stop made by Smith 
and a first down for New England. Their ability to run the football, now you talk about the balance. Look at the block down right there, and then they're able to get to the second level. They go quick, keeping the defense off balance. Alu Alu makes the stop on Ridley there, gain of three to the 20-yard line. We talked to Brady last night about the pace they try to keep up in practice to get ready for it, what we're seeing right here. Well, it's really about keeping the defense off balance. He's going to try to catch them doing something or maybe not quite ready. He's got a quick snap. If they don't cover the center and two guards, Brady will keep it himself and run for a significant game. Brady second down and seven. They were looking for Lloyd that time. Nice block, by the way, by Ridley coming out of the backfield. It bought Brady a little bit of time. Third and seven now for New England. You might say that Tom Brady was throwing that to the back shoulder of Brandon Lloyd, but he was really just trying to get, it, get rid of it. Didn't want to take a sack, didn't want to take a hit. And you can tell the chemistry between he and Brandon Lloyd continuing to improve, but he has a tremendous amount of trust in guys like Wes Welker and Danny Woodhead coming out of the backfield. Ninth play of the drive coming up, third down and seven from the 20. Brady tipped and they were going for Woodhead with some nice coverage and off the line. That was Jeremy Mincy. That's a defensive lineman trying to follow that very fast Woodhead out of the backfield. This is great coverage by Mincy. Look at him get a hand up. That was a sure touchdown for Danny Woodhead. If Brady can get maybe another two inches above and beyond Mincy, that's going to drop right in there very nicely for a touchdown. <laughs> Can't say enough about the coverage by a big guy like Mintz. Gostowski has kicked field goals today at 25 and 49. This will be a 38-yard try. Mesco, the hole. And the Patriots get, grab the lead, their first lead today. From 38, Lloyd, big on that drive. Catches of 9, 16, and 14 yards from Brady. Brady and Belichick, the winningest quarterback-head coach combination in pro football history. They've won 10 division titles together. They've gone to five Super Bowls together. <laughs> it's a prolific tandem between head coach and quarterback. The Patriots have 13 unanswered points. They just got a field goal of 38 from Guskowski, who kicks this one into the end zone, and Murphy will leave it right there. To the 20-yard line with the touchback. First down and 10 yards to go for quarterback Chad Henney and his Jacksonville offense. So well, now Henney and his offense have to regain some momentum. They had it. Got off to a great start in this ball game. And now Tom Brady and the Patriots whittled away at that lead. Now have taken a 16-13 lead in the ball game. If Henney could do one thing better, he's got to convert on third down. So far, two of seven in the first half of the ball game. That's one area where the offense can improve. So the Scott's going to join Love and Will Fork down the line. First down and 10 here for quarterback Chad Henning. <laughs> Good time. I don't know where he was going right there. There was an interception right there. It's kicked off by Gregor. They're going to rule it down. They were going for the receiver who was Cecil Shorts at about the 45, and Gregory scooped it left, but uh, incomplete. Miscommunication between Henny and Cecil Shorts, who didn't continue his route over the middle of the field. It appeared to be overthrown, nearly intercepted, as you talked about, Kevin. But had he caught that ball going over the middle of the field, he's going to be able to catch and run with it and create a huge gain on the play for the Jaguars' offense. <laughs> Second and ten, McCourty and Aarons in other corners. Chong and Gregory are the safeties. Henny, second and ten. Underneath, Shorts, being a five, brought down by Gerard Mayo. Over a hundred tackles for the fifth consecutive season. Look we'll at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Eight, pos or I should say seven possessions in the first half of the ball game. And they were able to score on three of the first four. You saw the missed field goal. We talked about having more opportunities to score and not taking advantage of it. Wishing you had those points now that you're in the second half and Tom Brady and his offense are starting to click. But they've got to convert these third down plays. Marquise Cole is coming as the fifth DB, third and five. Henny underneath and incomplete. There's a flag. They were going for shorts, coverage by Arrington. They haven't seen a lot of penalties today, just one previous to this on New England. 
Pass interference, number 24 in the defense. Ball will be placed in the spot of the foul. First down. When they got Tlaib, they moved McCourty to safety. That allowed them to then put Arrington in that slot. But with Tlaib not starting, they've had to kind of jumble around their secondary. And Belichick would love to leave Devin McCourty at the free safety position where he's played very well, showing excellent range and ability to make plays on the ball. And he will be looking into the nickel here on a first and ten. Angel Owens, blocked by Winkler, blocked by Lewis. And he's up to about the 35-yard line on a game of five. Patriots defense came into today allowing the most explosive pass plays of any defense all season long. And you see they continue to do it today, whether it's Cecil Shorts, whether it's Shipley, or whether it's Montel Owens catching the ball out of the backfield and ripping off a 54-yard catch and run. They continue to struggle, even though we're now in week 16. They've got to improve if they expect to go deep into the postseason. Still the five in the secondary. Here's a handoff and a drop by Minkovich is going to stop the running back, Montel Owens. It's a loss of two. Tracy White, by the way, playing the nickel linebacker in this particular defensive scheme for New England. And one might argue that maybe the Patriots <laughs> want to give some of their top-end guys on defense a little rest. I don't think they're counting this one as a win against the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think they have great respect for Jacksonville, but we told you a key to leave is battling that hip injury and so wanting to give guys a rest I think it might be appropriate six defensive backs third down and seven here comes Ninkovic who goes the ball over the head of Schwartz where Henny has really struggled with accuracy here since the first quarter when they racked up over 200 yards they have got a punt five and punt no they struggle on third down they have all season long this offense is ranked 31st in third down offense. They convert roughly about 29% of their third down opportunities. They're struggling again here today where they've only converted two of seven. On a day which is basically winless here in Jacksonville, Brian Anger, the rookie, will punt this to wide receiver and punt returner Wes Welker back inside the 20-yard line. And signaling four and a lot of the fair catch at about the 8-9 yard line. 60-yard punt. And inside the 20 at that. That's what Tom Brady will begin with his offense when we come back to Jacksonville. Love blimps. Aerial coverage of today's game provided by Direct TV and their blimp high overhead. First down and 10. And Ridley brought down in the play by Dewan Landry after a gain of four. They'll put him at the 12-yard line for New England. Now, if you're Jacksonville, you have to be able to keep Tom Brady from continuing his rhythm of completing passes in short order to Wes Welker, yeah. to the tight end, Tony Gonzalez, Woodhead out of the back door. Do something to pressure him and disrupt the rhythm you see him having in the later part of the game. Into the middle, second and six for Tom Brady. Blocked by Solder in the hands of Hernandez. The coverage on the play by Harris. Third and six. Tom Brady has gotten a hot hand after the slow start. You can see his last three possessions, Kevin. They've had drives of ten plays or longer, and they've been able to score on all three of their last three possessions. Touchdown, couple of field goals, and start to allow him to get hot. All of those field goals will be touchdowns. Six defensive backs, third and six, Woodhead at the side of Brady. They get five in the secondary. Brady, nice defense on the play, no flag. They were going for Branch. And the coverage on the play by Cox. They've been going after him a long time. He has an interception today. Three and out for New England. Uh, it's great coverage all over the field. This is what we call a coverage sack. See, everyone, no one is getting open. There's no separation of someone wearing a white jersey from those wearing the black. And Tom Brady was aware of the pressure folding in on him, but he didn't want to throw the ball in harm's way, and they're forced to punt it. Jordan Shipley will retrieve this punt from Mesco. Shipley was signed back in mid-November. And this team, which, as we mentioned before, has made 88 roster moves this year, amongst the most in the NFL, Shipley. Slater slows him down. And then Marquise Cole brings him down. Gain a two, 51-yard punt, and a good one. 
back in the hands of Jacksonville and quarterback Chad Henning. Wide gap between these two teams record-wise coming into today. New England has scored now 62 touchdowns to Jacksonville's 23 touchdowns on this season. But three points separating the two teams today. Murphy on first and then got by Ninkovic, chased by Mayo, and run out of bounds. Across the way, finds room to the 45 on a pickup of six. For complete pro football coverage, including everything you need to know from this weekend's matchups, all the way through Super Bowl 47. Visit cbsports.com slash NFL. CBS will have that broadcast on TV of the game from New Orleans. Second down and four. Fullback here is Greg Jones. Great time. Oh, except when Dederick came in, and there goes Henny, who's got the first down, and then he trips over his own feet at the 48. Well, I was so surprised it was there, and then they think the ball may be down, but it was blown dead at the 48 on a scramble of seven and a first down for Jacksonville. And Henny's got to be able to do something for this offense, got to be able to manufacture some plays. They've struggled since the first quarter when he put up 202 yards of total offense and only about 70 yards since then. So they have continued to struggle, but he makes some plays with his legs, creating a new set of downs. They're in the nickel. First and ten. What? 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 Find me limo! Find me limo! Timeout. First used by Jacksonville in this half. Three-point game midway through the third on CBS. That water taxi comes in pretty handy if you're going back and forth. There was a timeout taken by Jacksonville. They have a first and ten. We just had a seven-yard run by the quarterback Henny moments ago. No place to run, no place to hide. Owens thrown for a loss of about two. Arrington makes the stop. They drive him back to midfield. Nice play by Arrington. And I think of this Patriots defense, we talked about them giving up so many big plays in the passing game. If they want to improve at least today, they've got to do a better job of getting pressure on Chad Henney. Remember, the Jaguars coming to today's game haven't allowed a sack in 42 consecutive games and 26 pass attempts today by Henney. He hasn't been sacked at all. As you mentioned, Tracy White playing in this nickel in the uh, linebacking cores. Second down and 12. Ripper with the block at the right tackle. That may have been picked off. And it was at the 40-yard line grabbing the ball is Marquise Cole. First of the year. Henny is swiped with the pass to the side at the 40 of New England. Oh, just a great read by Cole. He starts outside, then nice back in underneath Justin Blackman to pick this one off. It's just a great cover to read. See him right there? It's just a great cover to read because he's also responsible for the offensive player close to the line of scrimmage. He comes off that coverage to wheel back in underneath where Henny was not expecting him to come up with the interception. Their 26th straight game with taking the football away. It's the longest active street in the NFL. Yeah. Patriots making plays now. Newly signed Kamar Aiken will be at the bottom of your screen here. Signed late last night. Oh, here's a big hit. Mincy trills Brady, but it was helmet to helmet. There was a flag thrown. Mincy's going to be charged right there. He got Tom right in the noggin with his helmet. That's the first sack of the game. Uh, well, I'm telling you, watch this now. Brady ducks. He lowered the target line. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. No. Hit to the head and neck area of the quarterback. Now you watch Mincy come in and watch. Automatic first down. Watch Tom Brady duck. Mincy has no way. He's not designed it trying to hit him in the head. But see, Brady ducks right into it. And you can't blame the defender for making that kind of play. What is he supposed to do? Mincy's trying to make a play for his football team. Brady is trying to protect himself. But there was no intent to hit Brady in the head with his helmet on that play. I think it was a bang-bang play that they've got to realize that it cannot be legislated. Shane Vereen is in the backfield for the first time today. Gives a block, but no, they get by him. Allen comes in. And they steamroll him right there at that sack. C.J. Mosley. And they push him back to the 43 and a loss of seven. Mel Tucker's group, they're joining the party. Look at this. Three guys into the backfield to get the sack on Tom Brady. 
And the coverage on the back end, Kevin, forces Brady to hold on to the football. No receiver was open on the play. Oh, yeah, these Jaguars, they still got some fight left in them. Into the nickel, second and 17, they need the 39 of Jacksonville. Brady underneath. Cox with the stop, about the 49. The catch was made by Brandon Lloyd. That's a seven-yard reception for Lloyd. With all that said, Tom Brady still in a favorable situation. Third and 10. Just about on this play, and you know he's going to hang in there. He's going to keep swinging. He can regain the momentum if he can convert this third down play. Woodhead at his side. Third and 10. They need the 39. Soto a good block at the left tackle. That may have been deflected it was. It's incomplete. It's fourth down. Brady again scrapes himself off the turf. He was hit on the play by Daryl Smith. They got to pump the ball. And Smith was going to blitz right here. But look at Woodhead. He knocks him off his feet. But he gets back up and put pressure in the face of Tom Brady. It forced the Aaron throw that still connected with Wes Welker at the second level. But it was just a little bit high over the head of Wes Welker. Sultan Nesco will point, will put the ball, and deep back will be Shipley. They're caught nine-yard line. Slater right there. 40-yard punt, well placed. Henny will be stranded at his 10 when we come back trailing by three. We're back now after the punt by New England. New right guard Steve Vallos. He's had a couple of stints in this game already. It's down in 10. Four in the secondary for the Pats. And this is Owens running outside by Scotland. Banged out of bounds by Tavon Wilson. There was a gain of a yard. And around the NFL, a very busy day. Very interesting. And if Cincinnati can hold on to their lead over the Pittsburgh Steelers, that would clinch both playoff spots and the wild card for both themselves and the Indianapolis Colts, who are deadlocked at 13 apiece in the third quarter with Kansas City. Gordy and Arrington at the corners. Wilson and Gregory in the secondary. Wilson taking the place of for this series for Chung, second and nine. He's trying to block as long as he could. It goes out to the fullback. Craig Jones, Minkovich is right there. Making the stop. Also with the hit on that play, Dante Hightower. We had about four tackles right off the bat. Gain of six on the play to the 16. You know, so much is expected for this New England Patriots defense for them to improve. We talked to Vince Wilfork about it. Last night, he felt that with young players like a Brandon Spikes, a Dante Hightower, and Gerard Mayo, and Chandler Jones, the talented defensive end from Syracuse, you expect this defense to start to take shape and form. They still have to get better, I think, on the back end in their secondary to get back to championship. Players. Two rookies, Francis and Jones, on that defensive line right now for New England, third and three for Chad Henning. Again, good time, and batted down at the line. Somebody got that was a deterrent, maybe, who got their big paw in front. Perhaps, but somebody did. They knock it away, and they got a punt to the oh, Jaguars. Yeah. Right, let's take a look. There's Dederick right there. He's coming, working into the face of Chad Henney. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's who it's going to be. Good call, Kevin. And their ability to get off the field now here in the second half, I think, has been really good. It's just almost a mirror image of what we saw in the second half last week against the 49ers. They played much better in the second half defensively. Welker got it from Anger. And the slippery Wilker to the 41-yard line. Finally brought down by Russell Allen on a 16-yard return, a 58-yard punt by Brian Anger. Coming up, college basketball on CBS. Next Saturday, two of college basketball greats and terrific rivals meet again. Number 23, Kentucky. Number 4, Louisville. It all begins when CBS Sports presents 75 years of March Madness behind the mic, followed by a coach's perspective. All next week on CBS. Here come the Pats. Three-point lead. Third quarter. First and ten. And that is Ridley. Brings it up. Mincy was there. Knight. The old number 96. Terrence Knight. Brings him down. Gain of four to the 45. Patriots trying to run the ball, but they don't. They don't make any excuses. This is about Tom Brady. It's about his offense. He's going to do what he has to do to maintain balance. Second down and six. Welker. 
On the reverse, a block there by Branch, and a tackle is made on the play by Jason Babin. Got him around the ankles, a gain of nine, and a first down run to the 46 of Jacksonville. Yeah, Wes Welker comes all the way around. Watch how he throws his little body in there. See how small the hole gets? He still challenges the defense to try to get everything he can out of this run. This is another run play. Goes and counts as a run play. Wes Welker can run it, can catch it, do just about everything in this offense. 4-3, four, 4 defense for yeah, Jacksonville, first and 10. Hey, alert, alert! Float. 15 to Mike. Over. Out. Ridley, good block by Solder, but uh, the pursuit of the Jacksonville defense is there. Russell Allen with the hit. Conch is right there, and a four on the play. The Jaguar defense is a tough nut to crack, I think, for the Patriots. They're having to earn everything they get against Mike Malarkey's defense right now. Well, emotionally, he had to just figure out where New England was after the big two games they've played against huge, huge teams in the Texans and Niners. Yeah, and they're still playing for everything. Mm -hmm. Second and six. Wendell with a block that offers that pass up to Wilker. Pruszynski knocks him down all the way to the Jacksonville 17. A beautiful catch for 25 and a first down. Hey, right, Tom Brady will even tell you, Wes Welker saves his bacon on this one. Yeah, it's a good throw. But normally, Brady puts that where Welker can not only catch it, but there's a catch and run opportunity as well. And that's called getting as much as they can out of every single play. Welker's first catch of the half from the 17, first and 10. Alabama, Alabama. Two tight ends. Ridley. And it looks like Bosworth is the one to get him, and I think he grabbed his shoe in the process, so Ridley loses his boot. It's a tackle by Bosworth, and again a six. Oh, this is a great run by Ridley. Watch. He makes one unblocked defender miss. Here's another. Makes a second unblocked defender miss, and still has a positive gain on the play. Incredible. Folden is in. Outside, this is going to be a catch made by Lloyd, but maybe a run. Was it thrown back at the line? It was. It was actually and officially going to be regarded as a run. He gets to the two. He picks up nine, first and goal. Well, watch Brandon Lloyd. He's nifty, making an unblocked defender miss, fighting off Derek Cox right grabbing the face mask. And Bolden, head over heels. He takes it on first and goal, and he gets to the one and picks up a yard on the play. So you have a committee of running backs. They're all competitive. They want the ball. Bowden comes in as Ridley goes out. He knows he only will get maybe one opportunity to score here. He's going to throw his body around. Just love the way that Bill Belichick uses the talent at his disposal. Real competitive group. They're going to have three tight ends when we come back. They're going to have a second goal when we come back. Here they go. A little flip right there at the end of three. We go to the fourth. Starting in the fourth quarter, the Patriots have its second goal in one. Big play on the drive, a 25-yard pass, a terrific reception made by Welker. Two tight ends. And they give it up the middle to Bolden, who was in the eye, as we quickly got back with Ridley. It's a loss of a yard of the play. They drive him back to the two. They hit by Babin, number 58. Now watch all the white jerseys get knocked back into the backfield. It was the get off by the guys in the black jerseys. Look, Taron Knighton knifing through, and then Babin on the cleanup as Bolden tried to squirt free, even though he wasn't down. He just ran into a brick wall called the Jacksonville Jaguars defensive line. Paul and Alanui and Hernandez both in there, third and goal at the two. Outside, Welker, touchdown. They're going to call him for a pick. They're going to try to get Brandon Lloyd in that he screened for Welker to get outside. And that is illegal if indeed that's the call. Prior to pass, holding, 21 defense. That penalty is declined, resulting oh. in the play is a touchdown. Derek oh. Cox. Welker with the two-yard touchdown reception. Brady his second touchdown pass today. Yeah, well, Cox gets sort of jammed up as they have a close pick. See, he couldn't get outside. Look at that. They were able to get the touchdown and beat Mike Harris to the corner. Welker with his fifth touchdown reception. Brady with his 32nd touchdown pass of the year. 
Gostowski. And the lead is 10 for the New England Patriots. 45 seconds into the fourth here in Jacksonville. Patriots currently the third seed in the AFC. They've won seven of eight. The record is 10 and four. Brady has had two touchdowns and two interceptions today for New England. How about this? The Patriots have scored 20 unanswered points to take the lead in this ball game. And Jacksonville Jaguars offense, they've hit a stalemate. Only three first downs in their last six possessions. Three field goals by Gaskowski, who's got the ball teed up at the 35-yard line right now for New England, and the ensuing kickoff after the two-yard touchdown pass to Welk. Murphy. Slowed up nicely in the play by White. 16-yard return. Let's take you to our CBS studios in New York and James. Washington staring at the postseason. Yes, JB, RG3, Rookie of the Year candidate, 22 yards. Santana Moss with the toe touch. Corner of the end zone. 27-13. Redskins get some breathing room over the Eagles. And a nice toe touch it was. Back to Kevin Harlan and Solomon Wilcox. Look at the NFC East. Battle right there. Dallas today is taking game with New Orleans. Giants in Baltimore. First down and ten. Fake to Owens. Pocket is down and here goes the quarterback in it. First down run. Scrambling his way out to about the 35, 15-yard pickup and a first down for Jacksonville. And Henny still hasn't been sacked today, and here's one of the reasons why. He's elusive in the pocket. He's got his head up. He knows this Patriots defense as well as any opposing quarterback, and he's very confident when playing the Patriots. Might have the backfield, secondary for New England with five. First down and ten for Jacksonville at the 35. Here we go. Murphy hit once. Really, Ninkovich is the one who made that happen because he slowed him up. No gain on the play. Dederick fell on him at the 35. It'll be second down and 10. Coming up in the Subway Post Game Show, join J.B., Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Bill Cowles. Scores, news, and highlights all over the NFL. That's all coming up on the Subway Post Game Show from our CBS studios in New York. It is second down and nine. Hey, go, go. Dibich on the line, Wilford on the line, Dederick, and Jones. Chandler Jones. He probably was going to be rookie of the year defensively, but some injuries slowed him down. Shipley is the one who makes the grab. White is the guy that makes the tackle on a gain of four. Everyone's talking about Chandler Jones to begin the season, and he was great, but then he had some subsequent injuries, and he missed some games, and that kind of uh, slowed down that... Uh, that bandwagon. But he still, I think, is a phenomenal use of a first-round pick. Mm -hmm. I think he's a great player. I think he's going to mold, I think, he and some of the other young defenders on this defense. I think they're going to mold into some phenomenal football players. You can see six sacks. There's no doubt he's got double-digit type sacks in his career on any given season. Had some ankle issues. Five in the secondary, third and five. Henny. Oh, he's got the receiver, Blackman, right in front of Marquise Cole. The catch, the first down reception to the 42, a pickup of 18. Oh, this is the throw. These are the talk when times when you think Henny can get real hot. Look at this nice throw. That's a coverage beater right there. <laughs> you throw that pass from one hash clear to the sideline, you know you've got the arm strength, velocity, and anticipation to carve up the defense. First and ten, Murphy. I'm trying to find some running room out there. They're using a whole bunch, like Mayo and a couple others got their hands on him. Gain of four, Solomon down to about the 38. One thing about the defenders in the Patriots secondary, you talk about some of the coverage problems they may have. They give up a lot of big plays, but every single one of them will tackle. Every single one of them will lay a lick on you if you don't protect the football. And Chung on the sideline here. Chung started today, second down and six. We got Wilson taking his place. The block by Monroe, the left tackle. There is a catch made by Shorts. He's then grabbed by Cole. The gain to the 34. It's a four-yard pickup. Ninkovich, the defensive end, he had dropped in coverage on that play, and Henny was just reading his drop. He was a little confused that time in space. And they were able to get the completion. 
Now on third and two, we talked about the Jaguars' offense struggling a little mm -hmm. bit on third down. They've got to be able to convert this one. Three of ten so far in the game. Rob Nikovich is a promising young player. Malarkey knows this is a vitally important possession on this third down play. Third down to the fake pitch. Shovel pass. Oh, and red round that time. And on that uh, receiver was White. Tracy White, man, was in the vicinity. It's a gain of two, and they are going to get the first. Yep, they're going to get it. Here's the pitch. Considered a forward pass. Mm -hmm. He's able to go ahead and get a new set of downs for Mike Malarkey. <laughs> He's elated. They're able to convert one. Owens in the backfield. Here's the first and ten. Ripper with the block at the right tackle. And it was submarine down the play by McCourty, a very smart player, is this McCourty. He's down to the 25, and he picks up six on the play. Yeah, we talked to Bill Belichick about Devin McCourty and his move to that position, and Belichick talked about it. He said the first time he had done it was when he was the defensive coordinator with the Giants. He brought Everson Walls over from the Cowboys, moved him from corner to safety. And Walls had great ball skills, great instincts, out of the same traits you see with Devin McCourty. Murphy on second down and four. And the teeth of that defense through the ensuing pile up. Not a whole lot there. Gain of one. We also talked to Vince Wolfork last night here in Jacksonville, and he's he is a, a, a terrific leader and, and the guy that anchors the a very strong front seven for the Pats. He's one of my, my favorite players to watch play in the NFL. He he destroys defensive lines, I should say offensive lines, and wreck their run game. He did it to Arian Foster and the Houston Texans in the Monday night game. He did it last week when he really got going in the second half against the 49ers. Third and three, good count, incomplete. Hightower was there watching Murphy. He's looking for a flag, but there will be none. Well this timed by Hightower. It's good coverage, absolutely. Good timing by Dante Hightower in pass coverage. Hightower had a good game against San Francisco as well today. Back and forth, he's gone from that sideline, and the Jaguars will try for a field goal here. Here's Scobie once again, a 42-yarder. You can see his afternoon. You mentioned before, 20 unanswered by New England. Let's see if Jacksonville can stop that with just under nine to play, and that is good. 42-yard field goal. Penny ran one for 15. Blackman had a reception for 18. They get a 42-yard field goal from Scobie. You see the Jaguar uh, practice fields are on the top left. Gator Bowl, when they got the franchise here, they took it down to the studs, rebuilt it. And they've got every seat filled here uh, for the most part today. Their biggest crowd since 2005, did Bob Kraft tell us today? Yeah. Huge turnout. Patriots these... will do that. Yes, they, they, they can will. move the needle, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they move a lot of stuff. <laughs> Slater will leave it in the end zone. To the 20-yard line for... Tom Brady and his offense tomorrow. It's Christmas Eve and two broke girls are unwrapping their special brand of holiday cheer. Celebrate the holiday with two broke girls tomorrow only on CBS. Brady today, two touchdown passes. 47th consecutive game he's done it. It's tied John Unitas. The numbers on both former Wolverine quarterbacks right there. Ridley and Montel Owens. First down and 10. Bolden is in motion out of the backfield for Brady. On the money, nice catch right there. It's made by Lloyd. He was hit by Cox. The gain on the slow. Oh, they're going to rule it incomplete, right? Did he just wave it off? I think he did. Incomplete. Second down and ten. Stay back at the twenty-yard line. Lloyd thought it. Look, he's, he's surprised yeah. as anybody. He thought, I had that ball. Brady thought it was a catch as well. Uh, we all did. See, okay, it gets into his body. You know. Okay, when he hits the ground, the ball comes loose a little bit. But it was jarred loose on a hit. See, that's a catch and run. That's a sure. football move. That's a football move. That was reception. He caught it, made a football move with it. Read it. Second and ten. One more nice block at the right tackle. Plus Wesney will make the stop on Welker. It was right up the middle. It's about the 24, and it's a gain of four. Yeah, but it's going to be third and medium for Tom Brady and company. They want to keep possession, want to stay on the field, got to convert the third and six. 
You know, when they go outside on that first and two, you expect Brandon Lloyd to make the catch. He was expecting, to, you know, a second and short type of play. Keep the offense on schedule. Now they're faced with a third and six. Look for them to work over the middle of the football field. Louis, Against five defensive backs, no untouchable for Hernandez. Coverage on the play by linebacker Russell Wilson. Brady can't do it on a day where he has thrown 39 times and completed 22. Now Mel Tucker is defense. Watch how they close off the middle of the field. They force everything to the outside on the numbers. See, they jam up double coverage on Wes Welker. And Brady has no choice but to go outside to Hernandez for the incompletion. This is the number one offense in the NFL coming into today, Zoltan Mesko. Jordan Shipley. The block from Rutland. And then the long snapper, Danny Aiken, 48. Got him around the ankles and brings him down. Up to the 34, he takes it. 15-yard return. Here comes Henny down 23-16. Patriots just punted from the 34-yard line. Jacksonville, first and ten. Yeah, and Henny has to put together a drive here to tie the ball game. He's got seven minutes to work against this Patriots defense, and we already told you he's given up a lot of big plays. John and Gregory are the two safeties, first and ten. Henny, out on the screws. Blackman is there. Arrington with the stop, along with Chung. The gain is to the 44. It's a gain of nine on the play. Good throw by Henning. Wednesday in primetime, J.B. Chris Collins with Phil Sims showcase America's favorite game with their own unique style. Inside the NFL, Wednesday on Showtime. They're going to give him a first down on that last second down and one. But what do you come for a first down for? <laughs> the stat man's going nuts. Here's a pass. That's a first down reception. Blackman on his pogo stick and taking it down to the 40-yard line of... The New England Patriots, a 17-yard pickup in a first down. Well, there was no sense of urgency to get over there to Justin Blackman. Look, he catches this ball. Now, where are the Patriots? Where? Look, he's hopping on one leg, <laughs> trying to stay in. Yeah. No one ever hits him or tackles him. After Chung arrives to push him out of bounds. Five defensive backs, first and ten for Henning. Another receiver. That's a beautiful catch right there and a pickup of five. It's to Shipley. McCourty was over in the vicinity. And the game to the 35 of New England. And you notice, you had three consecutive throws by Henning, all in the short outside part of the field, right in the flat. It's the dead area in this zone that you're getting right now from the Patriots defense. Henning's done a really good job locking in when they're playing man. And when they're playing zone, and where are the open areas, he's finding them. French is on the line. Dedrick is on the line, as is Will Fort. Scott is standing up. And now to so too is a Justin Francis, second and five. Cut short, breaks from a 40 tackle, takes it inside the 20, drilled on the play by Gregory. The catch and run of 17 to the 17 of New England first down. This is one thing Bill Belichick said they had to do a better job of doing is tackling the receiver, not allowing the yards after the catch, particularly with Cecil Shorts. Devin McCourty drives on it, can't wrap up, reminiscent of what we saw on the catch and run play by Michael Crabtree against. Arrington late in the ball game last week. Better is Jason Henney. Henney throws it off to Owens. He's inside the 10. Hit by Chung. Hit by McCourty. They'll spot the ball at the 8 and about a yard shy of a first down. Well, this offense is looking as good as we've seen them look all season long for Jacksonville. Even down inside the red zone where they struggled to score points. They were 0 for 4 last week inside the red zone against the Miami Dolphins today they've been much better now looking at second and one let's see if they take a shot in the end zone to someone like Justin Black second down and one Murphy stand back at a block it's a gain of two carves his way to the six that's good for a first down first and goal to go Jacksonville trailing 23-16. Well, that was a trap play, and it I don't think it was well conceived. The timing of it was really poor. And that's some of the things I'm sure Mike Malarkey wants to improve upon with a good, strong off-season program here in Jacksonville. I think by formation and by personnel grouping, you could tell they wanted to run the football there. Now Blackman is back into the ball game. High tower remains in for the secondary first and goal at the six. Fake to Murphy. 
Good time. Back into the one. Drilled by Arrington. Gain of five. Second and goal. Oh, Arrington had to come a long way on this one. Blackman comes clear across the other field, other side. And then he catches this one, but because of the great pursuit angle by Arrington, look, Blackman's not going to be able to catch it and turn off the goal line. Great play by Arrington. Nice hustle. Shorts has come out. He looks like he is injured. Wimper is now going to become a tight end eligible. Bradfield becomes the right tackle. Second goal for one. Greg Jones digging, climbing. Close, but not in. Good stop in there by the Pats. Looked like uh, Will Fork and May Mayo were two of the guys that initiated the tackle. <laughs> Mayo's a little dazed in the team. They all are. He was the one that came in and just rattled Greg Jones. But Jones is a stout ball player mm -hmm. who's able to spin off the potential tackle for Mayo. Look at Mayo's woozy right now. He's going to stay in there, but I don't know if he can make that tackle two plays in a row. Wimper tackle eligible near side. Third and goal for one. Ooh. Potter, little used tight end. Both start number 88 in the offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. Part of the reason why you're two and 12. Well, I, I will say this as you take a look at him jump on this play. I, I think if you're two and 12, I do got to believe this is four down territory. If you're Mike Malark, you got a chance to tie the ball game in the fourth quarter, four minutes to go, then you got to come away with a touchdown here. Third and goal now at the six. So the ball is just barely shy of the five. Down he goes, the first sack. Back at the 11. Big play by Dante Hightower. Yep, and I think anytime you have two negative plays, as you've seen, they have the offsides. Now you get sacked. Robs you of momentum. I still believe now on fourth down, if you're Mike Malarkey, you've got to go for it. Give yourself an opportunity. Get your receivers out there. Spread them out. And try to make a play on offense for a touchdown here on fourth down. Fourth and goal at the 10. Timeout. Timeout, Jacksonville. Oh, the rookie from Alabama, Hightower, with a big play. And coming up, we got a big one, too. After the timeout was taken, Mike Malarkey said, we didn't take a timeout. And then the officials conferred, and they agreed that they had pointed the wrong way. New England took the timeout, so as you see, two apiece. In the timeout category, here we go. Fourth and goal at the 10. What do you see here? He's got to have his best players on the field. He does on this play, but he didn't on the previous two plays. The skilled players for Jacksonville have to make it happen in this situation. Fourth and goal. He's hit on the play. It's intercepted. It's picked off by Chung. The big-time hit from Jones. Still on his feet. Working his way, navigating through the defenders. Look at him still on his feet and finally brought down by Wimper to the 28. Flag is thrown. Jones with the big time hit. The rookie coming up huge on a big play in this one. I told you not to give up on Chandler Jones. He's still got a bright future. Yeah, he's shaking off some injuries, but he is so special as a player. He's got great length. Good use of his hands. He turns the corner to get the sack, the hit, I should say, on Henny, forcing the interception. Great, great play. The Patriots have seven red zone takeaways now, number one in the NFL. Incredible. Pressure leads to picks. After the play is over, unnecessary roughness. Number 75 of the return team. This is the goal. First down, New England. Chung had the pick. Bill Belichick loves it, and there it is right here. Watch Chandler Jones working against the left tackle, Monroe. See him, see the use of his hands? Mm. Gets extension, then separation. Then forced the interception. That ball's tipped, or should just wobbles out of the hand of Henny as he was hit by Chandler Jones and picked off 
by Patrick Jones. We always say pressure leads to picks. I think that's a perfect illustration of it. Ridley in the backfield, first and ten from the 14 for Brady. Paul Henry is going to lead the way as they come to the near side. Oh, and a player is holding his leg, and he is down at the 15. Ridley gaining a yard, and Paz Lesney. Mm. I don't know if it's a cramp or if he was bent an awkward way, but there he goes. Not a good sign. Yeah, he's holding that right knee. He knew it immediately, too. He cradled up in Jacksonville. Well, he's trying to put some weight on it there. He's able to put a little bit on it. Jacksonville, may, let's see what he's doing. Uh, may, maybe it is a cramp. Coming up in the Subway postgame show, join J.B. Dan, Shannon Boomer, and Coach Bill Cowher for the latest NFL scores, news, and highlights. All coming up from New York in the Subway postgame show right here on CBS. So the Patriots have it two timeouts jacksonville just burned a second timeout second down and nine from the 15. no the patriots have the eighth best rushing attack in the national football league came into today's game with 23 rushing touchdowns that's number one in the nfl with three minutes on the clock you're up by a touchdown you want to be able to run the football to run time off the clock here Bosworth has taken the place of Puzlesny. They are giving Jacksonville their timeout back because of the injury. It's second down and nine. They get by Fulmer. Robbery pass is caught by Roker. Krasinski is right there with the stop. Bosworth was there as two, Kyle Bosworth. It is a gain of six to the 20-yard line. Yeah, it is a big deal if the Jacksonville Jaguars get the timeout back. <laughs> Use your timeouts to preserve some time. You still have the two-minute yes. warning. That's also like a timeout. So to be able to get that back, yeah, I think it's big time if you can get the stop right here on third down. Welker looks like he has come up with another big catch. It's the 18th career game with 10 or more receptions passing Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice has felt a double whammy because last night <laughs> Calvin, Calvin Johnson of the Detroit Lions got by him as well on a, on a pretty significant record. With another game left, Calvin Johnson passes Jerry Rice all-time receiving yards mark for a single season. He had over 200 yards receiving last night against the Atlanta Falcons. I think it's amazing when you consider everybody knows you're throwing the ball to Calvin Johnson. He can still put up those huge numbers. Woodhead is in. Base defense for Jacksonville. Third and a long three. Brady. A nice move right there. And look at the run by, uh-oh, Mana Wanui, who takes it up, <laughs> who makes the 15-yard catch and run. First down, Patriots to New York. Shannon, no quit in the Saints all season. No way, JB, even though they have really nothing to play for. Drew Brees, 30 or 45, 375. This 60-yard pickup to Marcus Colston, 31-17, New Orleans Saints, with no regard for the Cowboys. That's what I needed. That set up a three-yard TD for the Saints. That's the toss back to Kevin Hall and I needed. Back to Kevin and Solomon. I got you, I got you. Good running after a catch by... Here is the run up the middle on first down by Ridley. And he finds a couple of yards brought down by George Selvey. It's a gain of two. We are at the two-minute warning. Two-minute warning, second down and eight coming up for the New England Patriots. We have a couple of timeouts and a 23-16 lead. Brady's been picked off a couple times today. Also thrown two touchdown passes. Gostowski has kicked three field goals. Ridley in the backfield, second and eight. Go inside, Allen jumping on him, along with Alu Alu, and George Selfie is coming back from a concussion. Gain of the yard, they'll put him at the 36. Kyle Bosworth does a really good job of what we call setting the edge defensively to turn that run by Ridley back inside for his help. Patriots right now number three in the AFC. They need Denver to lose one of the two remaining games they've got against Cleveland and Kansas City. And then the Patriots may have a chance to get number two in that first round bye. Right now they have no bye in the first round where they sit. Well, if you're the Patriots, you're also hoping for a Houston loss today. 
because if Houston loses, they're playing the Minnesota Vikings, and then they should lose the final week to Indianapolis, and New England wins out. They get the number one seed in the playoffs. And in the five trips to the Super Bowl, as head coach of the Patriots, Belichick has gone in those years when he's been either a number one or number two seed. Well, football outsiders, as this is the number one most efficient offense in the NFL, they score the most points. Today they've scored 23, third and seven. Jackson Wolves out of timeouts. Drills, Brady, back he goes, sacked to about the 27, third sack today, a former number one pick in 2010. Oh, Brady's going to take a lick, he feels this one, Kevin, watch this, crams right through and plants him on that shoulder as well, Brady laid there, sort of curled up in a painful position, Alu Alu came right through and got himself a sack, big play for the Jaguars defense. Play Brock is at 13. Mesco to punt. Shipley back inside the 25. They'll wait here and let this baby roll down. <laughs> got a block from Rutland. He finds a gap. Ninkovich was there. Oh, there was a fumble on the play. He may have been down. Rivera came in there, too. He's had the bad ankle. Didn't practice much this week. 59, Rivera. Down he goes. He got the ball back. 46-yard punt, 13-yard return. No timeouts. Here comes Henney. Ball will be at the 38. And now, Chad Henney, here's the thing. Remember that last possession? He began that possession by throwing the ball outside to his receivers. If you're the Patriots, you've got to know that. Jacksonville has no timeouts. They've got to complete passes close to the sideline where they can step out of bounds to stop the clock. you got to be able to jump some of those routes and make a play. First down and 10. Henny, good throw. Shorts dropped it and they get ready with the helmet and down he is. Oh, Chung oh. got him. Boy, look at the fly, three of them. Four, five flags thrown. I've never seen a play five flags. They were still coming. Seconds after the play was over. Everyone dumping their, their flags. And Chung, yeah, went to the head of Cecil Shorts. And mm. I think Shorts had been battling concussion problems that set out the Jets game. Earlier this season, Absolutely. you're exactly right. He had concussion issues. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Hit on the fifth of the receiver. Number 25 in the defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Now the officials do get this one right, Kevin. Watch Chung. Right to the head and with his helmet. He literally ducked his head as he collided with Cecil Shorts. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, uh, see, we've got, those are the ones that you want to legislate out of the game. Helmet to helmet hits on defenseless player. Now, Shorts can't protect himself there while Devin McCourty's trying to rake the ball out. And Chung just unloads to the head of Cecil Shorts. Because Shorts was injured on a foul, there is no 10-second runoff here. And the concussion, we're going to go back in time several weeks ago for Cecil Shorts. Week 13 at Buffalo. Yeah, you can see it. That's Ooh. right there. There's the hit to the head. And then he missed next week's game against the New York Jets. Set out that game. And now to have another blow to the head here, he looks really wobbly. Concussion protocols say they have to take him off the field. They're going to do a thorough look. This young man has put in a lot of work. He's threatening to become their first 1,000-yard wide receiver since Jimmy Smith in 2005. They've gone six straight seasons without having a wide receiver who has produced as well as Cecil Shorts. So they'll replace him with Tony Clemens, who was signed just after Thanksgiving. He spent... 12 weeks this year, number 17 Clemens did on the Pittsburgh practice squad after being a 7th round pick by the Steelers. So he'll take his place. Also out there, Mike Brown. It's first down and 10, no timeouts, Jacksonville. Henny. Too high uncatchable for Shipley. Coverage by Marquise Cole. 2nd down. Cole did a really good job undercutting the route, forcing Henny to throw it high and 
out of bounds. Remember that you've got to always defend the middle of the field because that's easy throws. But whenever quarterbacks are playing with no timeouts, they want to throw the ball outside of the numbers so they can get the catch and step out of bounds to stop the clock. Derek Martin is the sixth defensive back. Second and ten. That is dropped by Shipley. Chung was there. Cole was there. It's incomplete. There is no yellow. It will be third and ten for Jacksonville. Watch Chung knifing in to make the play here. He's the guy that pries the ball loose. See there? Look at that. See how he just gets that hand in? He was more protective on that play by Shipley. Instead of just unloading and trying to blast him, he played ball with his hands, able to get the ball out. Still the dime secondary. Third and ten. Henny. Hit as he throws, wobbles away, great pressure put on again by rookie Chandler Jones. Coming up the middle and playing a big time game, especially in the fourth quarter for the Pats. Every secondary defender loves a player like Chandler Jones. A guy who can get to the quarterback. Look, he fights off two offensive linemen and the motor he shows, the relentless pursuit of the quarterback, is why he's able to make a play. Well, they need the 37. It is fourth and ten for Jacksonville. Well, you've got to play the sticks if you're the Patriots defense. Seven DBs. Penny, and it was caught! Tony Clemens, did he scoop it in? Indeed it is. McCourty is there. 17-yard pickup. Clock continues to tick. No timeouts, Jacksonville. The guy taking the place of Shorts, Clemens, comes up with a huge catch. The spike was there, but was there a timeout taken before? Over to the right side, McCourty thought he was going deep, but then when he broke this route off, McCourty couldn't stay with him. Clemens dives to make a catch on that ball before it hit the turf. This is an excellent grab by Clemens. We're going to review it upstairs, and it is a catch. It is a catch. See, there he's, he's caught it. And now he's down by contact. Then the ball comes out. So I think it's going to be ruled to catch. Even after taking a look at it. Again, this is the guy taking the place of their top receiver, Cecil Shorts. Now, when he was down, when the ball was kicked away, let's see now what they rule. Jeff Triplett will be under the... Yeah, McCourty hood. touched him, though, yes. while he was down. True. So once exactly. he's on the ground and, and the ball was secure, McCourty touched him. So now he's ruled down by contact. And then the ball came out. Here's something interesting as well. The side judge blew the whistle. The spike will be wiped away. Please will... put 22 seconds back on the game clock. It will be first 22. down. So give them more time. They give them another down, yeah. If they rule it a catch, and from what we can see, it is a reception. It is a reception, yeah. I think it'll be upheld. It was ruled a reception in the field of play. They got up to try to spike the ball, but the, of course it's going to be... Not necessarily challenged, but they're going to review it as well they should. And there you see the ball comes out. I thought Clemens not only caught the ball, but he maintained possession as he was rolling over. The ball didn't wobble or jostle in any way, shape, or form. What about Clemens coming on to make a play? Yes. A crucial fourth down play for his quarterback, Chad Hitting. There have been four drops by Jacksonville receivers today. Look at Mike Malarkey, coached a brief time as the head man up in Buffalo. Most recently, he's been the offensive coordinator with the Atlanta Falcons and helping the development of Matt Ryan, now hired by the new owner in conjunction with the old owner, Weaver. But uh, Shad Khan now is the new owner of this team, and they both went in on hiring Mike Malarkey yeah, as the head coach. A, yeah, a lot of people think that the general manager, Gene Smith, and Mike Malarkey are tied at the hip. Well, Gene Smith had been hired by the previous owner, Wayne Weaver. And then Shad Khan comes on board, and he participated in the hiring process of his new head coach, Mike Malarkey. And so while there's been some talk here in Jacksonville that they may change out the general manager, I'm not so sure that we're going to see Mike Malarkey leave. I, I think Shad Khan loves the job that he's getting with Mike Malarkey. I think he's working with young players like the Cecil Shorts to turn him into a productive player. I think Chad Henney has a future here. The big question, will it be Blaine Gabbard? Will it be Chad Henney? We heard a lot of talk about Tim Tebow possibly joining his Jacksonville team. Well, here is a pretty important ruling by Jeff Triplett. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The receiver had his hands under the ball with position and completed the catch. The game clock is correct at 22 seconds. 
It will wind on my ready. And it should be first down. I think you've got to take a shot at the end zone if you're Henny. Against this defense, against this secondary for the Patriots, you force them to make a play by threatening to score a touchdown, throw the ball into the end zone. Gregory, there's a little spike right there to stop it. Now it is second down. Gregory and Chung are 20 yards off the line of scrimmage. Arrington is on one side, McCourty on the other, and the slot defending is Marquise Cole. Those are your defensive backs. And Martin is another one. Derek Martin has been in there this series. Not so sure you had to waste it down there. You still had 25 seconds on the clock. Second and ten. Henny. Oh, he's got Schiffel to the 12 yard line. No timeouts. You see the clock rolling. Got it's a, a gain of 18. It. it is a first down. They quickly assemble. Spikes the ball. Second and ten. Clock at eight seconds, as you can see. Now, I thought they should go down the middle of the field. We saw the 49ers attack this team down the seams. I think you've got to try to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup and try to get the ball to your best on-ball receiver. And in my mind, it's got to be either Blackman, who's a tall, rangy receiver, or how about the 6'6", Mercedes Lewis. If he's matched up against a linebacker or a smaller corner, number 89, here he is right here. <laughs> he can catch up with the football up in the air. He can go get it. Second down and 10. Penny. High. Incomplete. They were going for Tony Clemens. Five seconds to play. Third and 10. Now he clearly was going to Clemens right away. Never even looked over to Mercedes Lewis. McCourty was back there. And you got to spread them out and try to get the best available matchup. Give yourself time to read the defense on the pre-snap read. Again, he has Lewis out to his left. Third down and ten. Henny pressured, jump ball, and Chung. Second interception, which seals it for the Patriots, who come out with the win in Jacksonville today, 23-16. For Salma Wilcox, Kevin Harlan saying so long from Jacksonville. The second red zone takeaway by the Patriots, a big one. On a day where Brady threw two picks himself. Happy holidays, everyone. Let's take you to our CBS studios.